great. The wedding was great. It is good to be together, just worshiping and lifting up his name. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate God's love. Let's celebrate God himself, Jesus, who died for us and loves us and just gives everything for us. So let's just lift him up because he couldn't love us any more than he has.
Church, that song is a little different, right? It's, it's not so much like a worship song. I mean, it is worship, but that's, that's a song God is singing to us, right? And it, it takes kind of a lot of uh, courage to, to sing something like that, doesn't it? But it's true. Like, we're singing. It's a, true, it's a true message. I couldn't. God is saying, I couldn't love you anymore. That's right. And um, can, I just, can we just do that bridge one more time? When we sing that... Think about what, what you're singing. Right? You're singing words from God's lips into your heart, into your, into your family here in the church. This is a very prophetic, powerful thing. Just one more time, all right? Yeah. Start it up, John.
cause you raised. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you raised. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you.
generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all have gone before us, and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. thousand generations falling down in worship sing the song of ages to the Lamb and all of God before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry oh we all creation cries
Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood two cherubims, which are angels. Each one has six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled of his glory. And the post of the doors was shaken. And the house was filled with smoke. When the angel cried, holy, holy, holy. It says in the word that the whole earth is filled of his glory. Because the holiness of God produces the glory of God. Do you understand that? As we come together, we cry out, holy, 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 santo, santo, santo eres. And we draw close to God, we will experience the glory of God. Hear me, those three words, holy, 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 shook the doorposts in heaven. Woo! Because He's holy. The God we serve is holy. His church is holy. We're called to be holy. Do you understand what we're doing today? Do you understand what that song is about? It's about holiness. It's about separation. It's about proclaiming the glory of God. And as you and I begin to proclaim the glory of God, as the end you shout one to another, let me tell you something. Oh, this place is going to get filled with smoke. It's going to get filled with His glory. And we're going to see the hand of God. We're going to see the move of God that we have never seen it before. Are you ready with me? Are you ready to worship God? Are you ready to get lost in God? Are you ready to cry out to God? Holy, 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 holy. Your name stands above the 
vision that's how I was standing there and um I saw you walk into a home that needed repair and um and it's a regular day regular contract regular work all of a sudden a burden fell on you and you began to feel what was going on in that home and you began as you was building that home, you began to weep for the people of the home. You began to cry because of what was going on there. And God said, I put you there not only to fix that home, but that you might fix it spiritually in the way of prayer and praise. Because even as you begin to construct in that home, you want to pray for every piece. You want to lay hands on the, on the natural. And as you do, God is going to begin to bring some things in that home that need to be broken. And God will give you the opportunity to even speak to the, those who are living in that home and, 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 and to minister to them. But know that your work is not only in the natural to build, but as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. And even as you begin to work, even those people's home that I sent you to fix it naturally, and you begin to minister that spiritually, I will begin to build your home in a whole new way, in a whole new direction, save God. So you're not to fear, you're not to tremble, but I put a new burden on you, but it's a burden that, that, that he's carrying, but he placed it on you so you can feel what he's feeling. Because as you go into those homes, there's more than one home, as you go into those homes, fix the kitchen, fix the bed, or do the whole home, whatever it is God's calling you to do, you're going to feel what is going on in that home. And you're going to share the gospel. And because of your words, many 
the word that comes to me, the thermostat in that home will be changed. The atmosphere of that home will be changed. ourselves in this moment everything we're carrying on our shoulders just lay it down oh you who are heavy burdened lay it down before the Lord Here is where I lay it down 
every lie and every doubt this is my surrender and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to burden every crown this is my surrender this is my surrender here is where I lay it down every lie and every doubt this is my surrender Do whatever you want to
I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to do. That talks about surrendering. You know, I grew up watching Billy Graham. And every time Billy Graham would finish preaching, he would make a calling. I remember in class this week, Esperanza was talking about how she responded to the call of God. She was in the balcony and she came all the way down. And you know, I'm going to open up this altar right now. Because some of us are in a place of just God. Where's the words? Put, put the words back up. And I will make room for you. Lord, I'm going to empty myself. I'm going to ask you to come to surrender in the altar, whether you're born again or not. Come to a place that I am going to empty myself. And I want you, God, to fill me up and do whatever you want to do. Let me tell you, when you say that, it's radical. When you say that, get ready. Because God's going to hear you. And God is going to work in you. So I'm going to ask you, I am the first one here right now. Lord, I will make room for you and do whatever you want. I'm the pastor and I'm the example. I ask you to come join me. Come join me right here, right now. Let's fill the sanctuary up. Come sit with me. Come, come, come. Come, come, come on. Come, church.
John, as you were playing there, the Lord began to speak to me about you. He says, the word that comes to me, it says, I look to and fro for a man who was still in the gap. And I found none. And the Lord says, I look to and fro in your situation. Your family situation, your family picture, your family came. Grandchildren, your children. And though there's been no one there, but I put you there. You're the man that I'm going to use. You're the man that is standing in, the, in, in that spot and begin to pray, begin to cry out to God. God will hear you. God will give you the strength. God will lift up your arms. But as you stand there, as you stand there, oh, God know that you're the one that God put there to pray for them, to lift them up and to do battle for them. Because my son, there are times they can't do battle. There are times they don't know whether they're coming or going. But you know, you see, you have this discernment. You have the understanding. And God says, I know sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes it can hurt you. But say the Lord, I give you strength, new strength today to stand in the gap. Begin to intercede and begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy to the dead bone. Begin to prophesy to that thing that cannot move. Oh, begin to speak and you will see it happen, say the Lord of hosts. Oh, hold up. I said they left the word of the Lord for many of you. Begin to prophesy the word of the Lord. Begin to speak to that situation. Begin to speak. Begin to speak and you'll see what God will do. Begin to speak it. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's a little more worship and then we'll, then we'll go on. But come on, let's all lift up a hand. Let's all surrender. Let's all cry out to God. Come on. Begin to pray. That my house will be called a house of prayer. Begin to pray. Begin to worship. Come on. Come on. Woo.
Halleluja. Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Hosanna South Brunswick Church. Amen. A church where you can feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. At this time now, um, you, you, uh, we're going to get ready to collect, to collect the tithes and the offering. Here we go. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. <laughs> Welcome here once again from South Bronx Church. We just want to, uh, if you don't have an envelope, we're going to be collecting tithes. Just raise your hand, and the usher will give you an envelope. Amen. Everybody has an envelope, right? Amen. So what we're going to do as they play the music, stand up right now if you can. Stand with me. One more time. But stand. <laughs> Remember how to stand? <laughs> it's okay, right? <laughs> I used to sit, but I stand a lot. You can stand up. Please stand up. Thank you. And as the usher comes to your row, then you come forward and work your way outdoors, okay? Amen? But we're going to okay. pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray for this offering, Lord, that you require from us, Lord. Father, we cannot out, we cannot outgive you, Lord God. That's right. But you're going to provide every need that we need, Lord God. And Father, we honor, we honor you by giving you our tithes, Lord God. Let this go, Lord Father, we pray that it will build this house, Lord God. Yes. Pay bills, Lord God. Yes, Lord, Lord God, meet needs, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And everyone said? Amen. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. All right, you guys are a little quiet today. Come on. <laughs>
soul today, Lord God. Even as the word come forward, let that go into our soul, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, and those who are online, you could just click onto uh, your ties there on the, uh, your internet. And everyone set? Amen. Good morning, church, and here are your announcements for this week. Church, we ask that you continue to be faithful with your tithe and offering. Using the link on the church website will take you to the Tithely app where you can select how much you wish to give. The Ministry of Hope is looking for volunteers to pick up food throughout the week and to stay on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. to assist in distributing the food. Please see Martin or Giovanna for more information. We will be having our annual church picnic on May 26. More information will be available throughout the month. Our discipleship classes will begin on Wednesday, April 3rd at 7.30 p.m. over Zoom. Church, that is all of the announcements for this week. God bless. Good morning, church. So, um, as many of you know, Martin and I had uh, the food drive yesterday over at Stop and Shop right up the block. And I have to say, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. Um, we see faces from every kind of walk while you're out there. We're able to minister to people while we're out there. We're able to hear people's stories. It's just wonderful. Um, and then people coming up saying, well, what church? What church? And the fact that we're able to say, we're down the block. Oh, my goodness. We've never seen a church actually do anything like this before. So they're used to seeing other institutions go there and, you know, yes go there and do food drives, but they've never actually seen another church do something like this. So it's, it's awesome just to be able to hear those kind of stories. Um, and God is definitely so faithful to his word. You know, whenever we pray and we ask, we are definitely multiplied. The word of God in Philippians 419 clearly states, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And he most definitely did, guys. This is just some of the pictures. Um, obviously, it's not everything that we were able to um, have people donate to us. But Esperanza, thank you for coming out early in the morning. It was definitely cold. I'm telling everybody, dress appropriately here. I'm not dressed appropriately. It was, I had to put my music on and keep moving <laughs> just to stay warm. Honey, thank you for coming out for your time. Let me tell you, this girl at the end of the day, her and Ingeri, thank you, Ingeri, also. Um, they came out, and Steve, thank you for your time as well. You know, we couldn't have done this without you guys. And let me tell you, the girls at the end, because it was just Martin and I out there, who's helping you unload this truck? We'll help. Females. Okay? So they came out, they followed us, they helped us unload. Honey was like, my back, I can't do this. <laughs> but we did it with the help of God. This is Honey and Ingeri staying afterwards. Ingeri, you're such a blessing to this church. You know, we couldn't have done this without you. Martin and I, we were definitely de cama, como se dice en español. <laughs> this is the room. We're working on it right now, just unloading all of the donations. Everything is going into cabinets. We're still figuring out how we're going to... Um, uh, incorporate this on uh, on the dis distributions on Sundays. Um, it needs to last because we can't do this every weekend or at least we can't. When we're getting old. <laughs> you shush. <laughs> um, is that it, James? Or is there? Yes. So this is what we were able to do. Thank you for everyone who came out. Thank you for your support as usual. Thank you for keeping us in our prayers. In your prayers, excuse me. And the best is still yet to come. Hold on a second. Thank you. So I'll try to reserve my opinions and my comments for last. A couple of things I want to bring up to the forefront of everybody's mind. Once again, can the people that assisted us yesterday stand up? Because I want you guys to give these people a round of applause because they were out there in the cold. <laughs> right? Honey, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? Where's Honey? I saw Honey. Oh, there she goes. And 
I don't know, I don't know if the men in this house caught this, but I'm going to bring it to the forefront because I wanted to marinate on your mind. The ladies, thank you, you guys, you guys sit down. The ladies who were there to the end asked us who's going to help you unload it. I, in my heart, did not have, I just wanted to dismiss them, and I was like mentally preparing myself to unload the truck. But to have the ladies jump up and be like, we're going there. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, you know, I'll get the boxes. You guys get the, the small box. But, you know, even then, these, the, the females, something wrong. They don't listen. They, 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 they took the empty boxes and started, go ahead, and making it louder for me. So it's, it's called, it is called being smart. It's called being faithful. And it's called being resourceful. So once again, we're going to thank you. But we're going to keep on emphasizing the men of this house. I know we're not the, too many of us. But it's time for us to step up. God made us big and handsome and strong for a reason. And it's not for us to play with our phone. It's for us to step in and step in and fill in the gap and let, let us mark a generation, a, a path for the generation for other men to follow, especially the young ones. The second thing I want to bring to the attention has nothing to do with, with the ministry, but somebody walked in and graced this, this house. And it's Benny. Can you stand up? Because I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, you. I'm calling you out. Thank you. Yeah. This, this, young man, this young man graduated from where? Well, Marines. He graduated from the Marine Corps. And he is on his way to become a successful young man of God. Evidence, he's here now. One more round of applause for this young man, please. Thank you, everybody. And now, Pastor Francine. Good morning, church. Amen. Before they walk out, you know, Javon and Martin, they're always gracious, they're always thanking everyone. Can we just come and thank them for everything they do? Amen. Amen. For all the hard work. You go downstairs, the food is there, amen, but, you know, thank God for them for everything they do behind the scenes, amen? So just thank, thank you, Martin Giovanna, for everything you do for the church. Um, yes, yeah, so just uh, with regards to the announcements, we do have the picnic coming up soon. We have some flyers outside on the table. That's going to take place on Sunday, May 26th at Reichler Park. We will be having the service and the picnic afterwards, amen. There's going to be more information to come. We're still a little early, but as we know, we have the sign-up sheet, so save the date. Uh, start telling your friends about it. Start telling your coworkers, family members. It's a great time to have people come out, amen. And just, again, you could take a flyer. If you want to take it to work, just casually leave it, you know, in the lunch area, um, but it is going to be a great time. Also, we announced last Sunday, uh, we have that movie coming out. It's called Unsung Hero. Unfortunately, we did not get enough people to buy out a theater, which is fine because I found out um, we were originally looking for AMC, um, but there's another movie theater it's called Picture Show in East Windsor. They're bringing the movie. The tickets are cheaper there. So we will be now going there. Um, it's still going to be Saturday the 27th, April 27th. Unfortunately, I won't know the time until Monday the 22nd. I tried to ask the guy to, you know, give me a little heads up. He wouldn't give it to me. Um, but as soon as I get that information out, I will be putting it on the prayer line. I will put the information for the movie theater. You will have to get your own ticket. Um, but it's good because you get to pick your own seat. If you weren't here last week, um, I'll be having these little slips out on the table as well. It has the information, the address, the website for the movie theater, the date, April 27th, the movie outing. It's to go see the movie Unsung Hero. And if you weren't here, we'll be playing the trailer for you to see it right now. My place in this world. On my last tour back home, I lost a lot of money. A life of pages, to be found. How can we say goodbye to everything that we know and love? This is my last chance. I want to do something that matters. A heart that's hopeful, a head that's full of However you guys feel about being here, we need to pray for everything that we need. But this be gone is harder than it seems. But look around you. Your family, your faith. Feels like 
That's what makes you rich in life. Welcome to Nashville, y'all. I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. This is our exciting adventure. Together. Fire! You have been given a beautiful voice. She's a special one, David. Trigger's getting other folks to see it. Does anybody really care what a 16-year-old girl thinks about God? I'm trying to protect her, and it will never be enough. It's going to be dangerous and scary. It's going to be so hard that you want to go back. And giving in, it's not an option. We've got to fight our way forward. Your family, they're not in the way. They are the way. It takes a lot to live out your dream. Hard work and sacrifice. My dream is to be like you. You're my hero, Mum. Are y'all from England? Australia. Australia. I wish I had an accent. Can you hear me now, right? Hey, man. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll last in this seat a while longer than I usually do. <laughs> um, praise the Lord. Oh. Lost my sermon here, but I know it's here somewhere. Oh. Uh, this morning, I'm going to go back to what I've been sharing on the local church, uh, God's eternal purpose. Um, it's part of God's eternal purpose, and I want to just sh share a few things. I, I wrote some things down, of course, I wrote my sermon down, but you know how that goes sometimes. I, <laughs> I try to do it that way and, you know, <laughs> end up doing it another way. But, this, but I want to talk today about um, things that we talked about the local church um, and how important the local church is. Um, just praise the, praise the Lord as I do this. I want to start reading in Genesis. If we can turn to Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Um, and you know, um, this is so important, talking about the local church and God's eternal purpose. Um, uh, we are experiencing, I don't know if you feel what I feel, amen, but I really feel that we are experiencing a revival in the church. Uh, God is really moving in this house and it's moving in many churches. And, uh, and though there's a lot of... Um, People talking about negative things about the church, and there are some negative things out there. If you look for it, you'll find it, and, and uh, a, a lot of things being said, a lot of things being done in the name of Christ, in the name of the church. Um, I, I, I think we need to have an understanding of, uh, of who we are as a church, especially as God is moving in this church. Who we are, Hosanna, Sabonsic Church, and who is the church, right? Who, who is the church? What is the church? You know, um, uh, how important it is. As you know, I, I started this a while ago. Um, just bear with me as I look at my notes here. And that's okay. That's not that. That's <laughs> I lost my place, but there you go. Uh, but I, I, anyway, um, and I, I wanted to go back to this. It's, it's important that we go back to, um, to who we are as a church and how important it is. Amen? Um, it says here, uh, I quote it, um, God's eternal purpose. God's eternal purpose. And, uh, and I believe that, you know, in Genesis we can find what is, why did God put man here on earth? Why are we here? Right? Why did God create Adam? Why did God create Eve? Why did God create the humanity? Why did God create the earth? You know, there are many questions that, that we ask, and I have answered these questions, but I want to give a, just a little review. Um, and, but I, I want to first read Genesis chapter 1, verse uh, 26. Uh, it says here, um, um, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creep on the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish and the sea and over the birds in the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And I believe that Genesis is the sea book. It's a book of beginnings. Amen? Where all truth is found. And we want to find a lot of answers to life we, you know, and the purposes of God. We can find them in the book of Genesis. Again, why am I continuing this? I want to continue this be this series because um, there's a revival taking place in this church. I really feel that in my heart. I, I Our worship is so much different. It's gone to another level. Praise God for that. Our, our, our praise and worship has gone to another level. The word ministry in this church has gone to another level. You know, I, I love that we have a church that we're able to worship God, right? And we can feel his presence his presence and the manifestation of God. We can feel that. But let me tell you something. Um, yeah, um, it, well, this, this church is giving the word. You know, I don't know if you know, but uh, uh, you cannot have an excuse of not learning scripture in this house, not learning the word. Uh, a few months ago, we had Master Kara teach a class on apologetics. And those classes are still available on the internet, on Zoom. Um, um, and um, I don't know how long, much longer it will be. But if you want to learn apologetics, how to defend the faith, um, these are, Mark's, it, Mark's class was incredible. It was awesome. It was simple to understand. Uh, and and you, uh, it's a class that you want to learn how to defend your faith and use scripture to defend uh, uh, the word of God. You know, um, it, you got to take Mark's class. Mark did a phenomenal job. And now we're having a class on discipleship. Uh, Jesus told the church, go out. Uh, hey, his apostles, go and make disciples. That was the mandate. Uh, and Esperanza is giving two classes. It's every Wednesday uh, through Zoom, uh, you, you, you know, if, if you sign up for our uh, prayer line, uh, you'll be able to get all the information there that we give all our information and hook on that. And, and, and last week she had a class on um, baptism, and it was an incredible class. And I realized we need to have a baptismal service soon. So I'm looking, believe it or not, um, I'm looking to, to go to a place where we can have baptism. Uh, somebody recommended a place already. and Or we might buy a baptismal for the back that we, we could put together and take it apart. You know, and have something outside in the nice uh, warm weather. Uh, so that's an option with a nice picnic around it and have a great, great time. So there are options there that we're looking at to, to do that. A amen? But, but, but we, God is moving in the church. I say all that because it's to say you, we got worship, we got prayer once a month. For, and I'm really praying to move that. And I'm letting you, if and I know, I, 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 I want to have that more than once a month. I'm praying to God to, for the right time that we'll maybe have it twice a month. And then from there, maybe eventually three times a month. And have something that, that we can have every week, that we can come and do worship and praise and prayer in the house of God. Amen? And then we got Wednesday night teaching. And then as we're meeting here, the young people are meeting downstairs. The, the youth is meeting downstairs. And we have children's ministry. And we have the nursery. So God is moving in this house in the right direction. We got people involved in leadership that they, they tilt towards the Lord. They love God. Their heart is for the Lord. A amen. So God is moving in this house. So that is why it's, it's so important. Um, in Genesis, a, a, I mean, a, you, you, you see God give this mandate. And, and, uh, uh, and, and the Lord say, I'm going to make man in our image, under our likeness. And that is so, so important. Um, we need to have a proper understanding, again, of who and what is the church of Jesus Christ and who we are as South Brunswick Christian Church. When people, you know, Giovanna was out there and she had the banner, where are you guys? Who are you located at? I want this, um, this community to know who South Brunswick Christian Church is and what makes us Different. Why are we different? The, our distinctive, our, our, our attributes of who we are as a church. How important that is we, as a church, who we are. Amen? Uh, um, um, it, it, the church has always been part of God's eternal purpose. In Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, I'm using this new Bible here, uh, so I got to get used to it. So just bear with me. The book of Ephesians, chapter, uh, chapter 1. Uh, verse 7, chapter 1, verse 7. And it says, uh, chapter 1, verse 7 to uh, 10. 
So I'm, today I'm, I'm kind of teaching a little bit, so you bear with me. I'm not jumping all around, but it's good to have this kind of stuff, right? Just sit down. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and, uh, and prudence, having made known to us the mystery, notice, having to make known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, in other words, when the time was to come, he might gather together in, in, in one all things in Christ, both which were in heaven and, and, and on earth and in him. So he, here we have uh, this mystery that was hidden in, in, in times past. It's, and, the, and the Bible's full of mysteries, right? We, we talked about that. And, and the thing about it is that it's not in chronological orders. It's like a puzzle. My wife has a, a, a table right now in, 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 when I go into the dining room, and she loves making puzzles, you know? And literally, you look at it, it's the beginning of a puzzle piece, and all the pieces all stack up, and it takes time to figure out what piece goes where. Well, the, the truths of God are like that. And the, there's a lot of mysteries found in the scriptures. And, and, and it's the Holy Spirit. And, and, of course, going to school and learning how to interpret and lear, learning the laws of hermeneutics. But more than that, it's learning God's hermeneutics, like I call it. You know, relying on the Holy Spirit that God guides you and shows you truth that he had. And the church, a lot of people think that the church is just because the Jewish nation failed. A lot of dispensationalists believe in the dispensation movement that God's plan all along was to have Israel and Israel was going to do all of this. But because Israel failed, it caught God by surprise. Now, God had to come up with a plan. And his plan, uh, plan B was the church. But that's not true. It's since the beginning of time, since the, the foundations of the world, the ch- God has had the church in mind. The church has been in God's mind. That's you and I. God has had in mind. I want to tell you, you are not somebody that just happened to come through. Since before time began, God knew who you was. God had a calling for your life. God is separating you and call you. Uh, uh, and you've been chosen of God. I believe every human being on the face of the earth, God has given them an assignment. Whether they fulfill it or not, it's up to them. Whether they choose to believe in God, it's up to them. But I know that you are here and God has called you. God molded you. God made you in the belly of your mom. He shaped you. He named you. He, he created your past. You are who you are because God created you that way. Amen. And it says here, again, very important, um, Genesis 26. Um, just bear with me. Again, then God said, let us, notice more than one, let us, but we won't get into that now. Let us make man in our image. It was part of God's eternal purpose from the very beginning. Um, just bear with me, I got to turn the page. Image, what does that word image mean? It means replica. It means likeness. I was looking at it in the Greek and Hebrew, you know, in the Hebrew. Uh, you go through all these, uh, your books. Uh, it, it means, uh, again, replica and likeness. You know, my, my sons, you know, they, a lot of times they say, Maddie, you're just like your father, you know. <laughs> you can ask her what I mean. And, then, and of course, she goes, no, 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 you know. Uh, but uh, we are, we, you want our children, hopefully, to be like us, right? If we're good people and we love the Lord, you know, uh, you want our kids to be like us. Um, and, and that's so, so important. Well, God said we're going to make men, and, and, and we're going to make them uh, in, according to our image. Again, uh, and again, that means as, um, image, replica, likeness of God. So he created Adam and Eve. Now, when he created Adam and Eve, you got to understand something. When he created them, he created them sinless. It's not what we have today. They were totally different in the sense that they live in the presence of God. They live, they were naked in this garden that God created. Now, there's a few uh, things. Why did God create a garden and then he had them living there on the earth? There's a few theories there, and, some, and I say theories because, um, you know, it's a lot of people believe in the old earth and the new earth, you know. Um, I happen to believe that there was another creation, and the earth was just a, just a recreation, and, uh, and Satan was cast down and destroyed the first creation, but that's a whole different thing. But anyway, um, as we see in Genesis, God creating the earth, and God placed them in the garden. So they're in this garden. It's a beautiful garden. It had everything that it needed, uh, and the Bible says that they were naked, and they did not know it. 
Now, you heard me talk about this before many, many times, and I think this is so, so important. They were naked, and they didn't know it. Why? Why do you think they did not know it? Because I really believe that they were in the presence of Almighty God. And the glory of God was so pure and so powerful that it covered them. That was their garment. Their garment was the glory of God. You know, um, uh, and, and, and that's so important. Oh, so, so, so Adam and Eve were different. Um, um, they had the intellectual. And the, now the image of God, take, it, it, it has a few ingredients in it. And I'm going to explain them to you. Um, number one, um, I, I, I believe they were intelligent. God made intelligent beings. We are not animals. The world will tell you we're animals, you know. No, we're made above the animals and just below the angels. And, 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 and we have an, 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 an intellect in us that God is giving us. Amen? Uh, uh, we, we're able to reason. We're able to make decisions what is right and what is wrong. You know, uh, when God told Adam and Eve, uh, you can eat of all the fruit in the garden, all the vegetables you want. A lot of people believe that they were vegetarian because at the time they didn't kill any animals. You know, so they were eating uh, so that, uh, the fruits. They were eating the vegetables. But God told them, the tree of, the tree of knowledge of, of good and evil, of life, you won't touch. So they, he, he put them there and he, they had to make a decision. Uh, we are not going to touch this tree. We are not, you know, uh, or, or eat from it, should I say, or eat from it. And then the serpent came. Now, where did the serpent come from? How was the devil on earth? You know, again, you know, a, a lot of people believe he was cast down uh, and, 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 and he was living on the earth. And one of the jobs that one of the mandates that God gave Adam and Eve, uh, yes, they will be made in his image, but they were to have dominion and they were to subdue the earth. Well, wait a minute. If the earth is perfect and, and everything he created is perfect, why does man have to subdue and, 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 and the earth and have dominion over it? You know, and so, so there's, there's some language there that you puzzle at sometimes. But when you step back and you start reading Genesis, you see how the, uh, the serpent comes on, on the scene and, and, the, and, and the Bible says that the serpent walked at that time and began to speak with Eve. Now, I don't know if a serpent spoke, but uh, I, I imagine that if an animal began to speak to me, I would freak out, you know. <laughs> I would run or something. But they got into a conversation, and, and, and he, still, he begins to question God's authority. He begins to uh, question, did God really say that? God is hiding something from you. So, so we, we, we see that man has now got to use his intellect. You know, he has to start reasoning in his mind. Um, so, uh, so we, we, we see the intellect of man. Man had emotions. Emotion comes from God. Now, a lot of people don't like to use emotions. And now, people, uh, now, I believe as a Christian, we should not be led by our emotions. Our emotions can deceive us. Because you can feel good one day and feel bad another day. And because you feel bad one day, you begin to make a decision based on that feeling. And we cannot base, we cannot make decisions based on our feelings. But we need to make decisions based on truth. On truth and knowledge that we have gained throughout and, and, and experience, especially the Word of God. We want to make sure that the decisions that we make are according to the purposes of God. Amen? Very, very important. Uh, so uh, it, it says, so we made the image of God that involves intellect, it involves emotion, it involves your will, what you want to, to, to do, how you're going to live, uh, uh, and, and it, it, surrendering your will, a, amen, um, and, 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 and body. We're like God, having arms and legs, even though God, you can't contain him in a normal body. But the Bible talks about the right hand of the Lord, and he, he set his foot, and, and, and he rested on the earth. So in that way, in the natural, we are like him. I'm talking about the natural. Now, spiritually, again, we were filled, and the man, Adam and Eve, were, were filled and covered by his glory. The glory of, oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just have so much problem with this. Let me see if I can get this right. Um, anyway, uh, so um, the glory of God covered man. And I really believe, thank you, it was the holiness of God. What is the glory of God? What is, if, if man was covered by his glory, what is the glory of God? You know that I looked and read, looked and read, and John Piper had, an incredible definition. 
He said, you cannot describe the glory of God. He said, you almost cannot understand the glory of God because it's so wonderful. It's so pure. It's all the purity of God. It's pure, the purity of God, the pure love of God. Uh, 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 what he cannot do, he cannot lie. He loves you. I mean, everything of God is so pure and, and so holy. And, and that's why I, I, I read earlier today in, um, um, in, I, in Isaiah chapter 6, you know, the, the angels shout, holy, holy, holy. All of a sudden it says that the whole earth shall be filled with the glory of God. You cannot separate holiness. From the glory of God. And that is why the earth was filled with the glory of God. That garden was filled with the glory of God. The animals submitting to Adam and Eve. Everything growing great. And, and Adam having dominion on the earth. And Eve too. Because you know um, the, the, the Bible spoke about the, that, that they were naked. They didn't know it. They were covered with truth. They were covered with purity of God. They were covered with the very presence of God. And that's why the Bible says that when they sinned, Eve was deceived. Adam, he ate willfully. He chose to eat. Now, I don't know if it was because in his mind he thought that if he didn't eat, he was going to lose Eve. I do not know why he did it, but he ate willfully of the fruit. And the minute he ate of the, of the fruit, Ichabod happened. And you know the story of Ichabod. Ichabod means the glory is departed. And the glory departed from them. And then Adam and Eve begins to look at themselves. And they realize they were naked. Because the glory departed. Because God is holy. God is pure. And if you're not holy and if you're not pure, that demands judgment. And God knew now God knew that he had to bring judgment on Adam and Eve. God told Adam and Eve, the day you eat of this fruit, you will die. Now, physically, they did not die. But man's life was one day for God is a thousand years. And Adam lived 900 and something years. He lived within that one day of God. Remember, for God, one day is what? I said it again. It's what? A thousand years. And a thousand years for God is what? One day. That's very good. You're learning scripture, you're learning to interpret scripture. Amen? So Adam lived 900 and something years. He died within that one day. But spiritually, at that moment, when the glory left him, he also died. Now there was a separation. Now there was a separation. Now the image that God had given Adam is totally changed. Even though in the natural, it's still the same. We have, we, are, we, we have intellect, we have emotion, we have will, we have a body. But spiritually, it totally changed. Now the glory is departed. Now God comes to the garden. And he's walking in the garden and he's crying out for Adam, Eve, where are you? Guys, where are you? God knew where they were. It was a rhetorical question. He knew the answer to that. Where are you guys? They were hiding from God. They never hid from God. There was something special. There was a relationship there that God had with Adam. Can I tell you that that is the kind of relationship God wants to restore to you? Because of Jesus, you can have that relationship again. And that is why it's so important as a church, us, Hosanna South Brunswick Church, the universal church, that we have understanding of who the church is. It's this God is, it's, it's call out people that God has put together. It's not the four walls, by the way. When we go, when, when we go have our picnic it, o, o, over here in the park in South Brunswick, that's the church. Where, when we get together, we've been the instrument and we're worshiping God and people walking by, driving by and seeing the bunch of a group of people with their hands lifted up, praying and worshiping God. They're seeing the church. And when they look at the church, they'll see people that are obedient. People that love God. People that's been forgiven by God. People that's been restored by God. And they look and they see a light in us. And if Esperanza is one light. It's John is one light. And I am one light. And Nancy is one light. And we're all one light. That creates one big light. One big glory. And as people's driving by, they'll see the manifested glory of God upon the people of God. Upon the church of God. They'll see the bride. They'll see the temple. They'll see the army. They'll see it all. 
and know that there's a difference. So now that they're, they're naked and in the garden, and God calls them. And so, Lord, here we are. So, you're hiding. You're hiding. Let me tell you something. When you are not right before God, you hide from God. You don't want to go to a church where God's spirit is moving, where there are prophets, and the prophets that point you out. You, you look for the church that's really, um, God's not moving too well. You know, it's all show. It's all, it, it's all you know, compromise. Yes, thank you. And we feel safe. We, go, we look for the big church. Maybe thousands, and we'll sit in the back somewhere, and we feel a little good. But, but we, we're, we're hiding from God. There's a lot of us that we hide from God. There's a lot of us we hide from the Lord because we're not writing our walk with God. And, and here we have in Genesis, God, God is talking, you know, Adam, Eve, where, where, where are you? We're here, Lord. We're hiding. Why, why were you hiding? God wants to know, why were you hiding? So we were naked. You know, the Lord tells him, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? You know what Adam and Eve did? They took a bunch of leaves. I got to be careful. <laughs> I'm going to get killed. No, no, just one leaf. Just one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> they, took a, <laughs> they took a little leaf and they put it on the sofa. <laughs> they hide themselves, you know, wherever it covered, you know. They, they sewed it together and, and they came out of the bush and God sees these you know, man thing, all these monsters, whatever, you, they, this bush is moving around, you, you know, these leaves are moving around. And, and, um, and, and you know, they, they were trying to cover themselves. And God said, what you did to cover yourself. Now, this is paraphrasing. It's not in this kind of scripture, but it's not enough. It's not enough. See, your works, no matter how good they are, you can feed the hungry, do all the good stuff. It's not enough. Hear me, it's not enough. It's, it, isn't it what all I'm getting from this one verse? Isn't that great? Being made in the image of God. Uh, amen. And it's just one verse, you know. So he, he says it's not enough. And God goes and he covers them with the skin of an animal. Can I ask you a question? How do you think God got the skin of the animal? He sacrificed. He killed the animal. An animal had to be killed. An animal that did nothing wrong. I believe it was a lamb. You know, I believe it was a lamb. And he, the animal was slain. The animal's blood was slain, was, was, was poured out. Innocent blood. Innocent blood. And because innocent blood was spread, now that skin of the animal covered Adam and Eve. And that tradition kept throughout all of it. <laughs> history of Israel. In the tabernacle, in the temple, the people will bring in the animals. The animals will be put to death and, 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 and burned. And that was an offering. So innocent blood had to be shared. Innocent blood had to be shared. And what God was doing, he was showing Adam and Eve, very important, he was showing Adam and Eve for them to stand before him again. For them to have a relationship. Blood had to be shed. Something innocent had to die. And that was all pointing. Is all, all, now notice, this is New Testament. This is Old Testament. So right now I'm in the Old Testament. This is all speaking. All this stuff in the Old Testament is speaking of what God was going to do in the New Testament. And what was God going to do? He was going to offer up the lamb. Who was the lamb? Jesus was the lamb. And Jesus said, no man takes my life. I lay it down. And Jesus went to the cross, and he died. And when he was dying on that cross, you know what he did? He began to restore the relationship that Adam and Eve had with him. Because when Jesus said, it is finished, there was a veil in the temple. And, and, and the priest would go there. The priest would go once a year, and he would talk with God. And no one, no one can go past the veil. Let me see this. What is this here? 
I don't know who this is, but probably my sisters. This is the veil, right? This is the veil. This is the Ark of the Covenant. This is where God moved, and there was a veil right here. And no one can go past this veil. If you went past this veil without killing an animal, God will kill you. If you wasn't a priest, if you was not a priest, and you went behind the veil where the Ark of the Covenant was, God will kill you. Whenever the priest went to minister in the Ark, he had a rope tied around his leg. They had bells in his garments because whenever the priest moved, they knew he was alive. They heard the bell moving. But if the bell, if they heard a boom, and no more sound of the bell, they would bring him in because he wasn't right before for God or he did something wrong. Now, when Jesus died, he said, it is finished. The veil was torn. And you know what that meant? That meant and that meant everybody could have a relationship with God. God began to restore. God began to restore that relationship. And now, and this is the key, and I have all this, and I'm not even looking at my notes. This is so terrible. Why do I do this? Uh, now, I just want to see what happens. He dies, and then I finally get it again. <laughs> the church, us, Right? We, we, we are the call out people, the Jews and the Gentiles. We've got to include the Jews, right? People, uh, Jews and the Gentiles. We all come together when we make the body of Christ. We're the call out ones. And God tore the veil to now when we say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Because there's got to be repentance, guys. You must repent of your sins. Recognize that we're sinners and repent of our sins. And now we repent of our sins and we come over to God. We cross over. There's no veil now. We all, all can come in. Not one priest, not once a year. Now we can have the relationship that Adam had. And that's still being restored. And now we look at the second Adam or the last Adam. Who's the second Adam or the last Adam? Jesus. We become like him. That's why he says, um, um, it, it says, um, let's be men in our image. Though spiritually we lost that. That's being restored now through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. Um, uh, so um, the, the, it's, it, it's the glory of God manifested. What is the glory of God? It's the glory of God. His glory of God is the manifested presence of God. It's the beauty of his holiness, the beauty of his holiness. Again, Isaiah 6, uh, 3 to 4. And one cried to one another, holy, uh, again, Isaiah 6, 1 to 4. Uh, and one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Wow. Of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And then verse 4. I love verse 4. And the doorpost was shaken. Think about it, These angels crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And then the whole place gets filled with smoke. And even in heaven, the, the, the doorpost is shaking. The temple is shaking. Isaiah C, and the first thing he says is, woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips. I, oh, my God, look where I'm at. I'm going to be killed. Woe is me. And the angel comes and touches his lip with a coal and, and purifies him. And this is important. Here it is, Isaiah in the presence of God, this vision that he has, and, and he sees the angels, and he hears them cry out, holy, 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 three holies, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit, holy, 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 and cry out to God, and, 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 and the whole place gets full of smoke, and, and the angel begins to say, the glory of God shall fill the earth, and he looks at this, and all of a sudden, fear comes upon him, fear comes upon him. It's just like when he was on Mount Transfiguration, when Jesus was in the Mount Transfiguration, and the cloud comes down, and all of a sudden Jesus manifests himself as God, the glory shining, and, and fear fell, fell upon Peter and the rest of them that were there. And, and, and whenever the Lord appeared himself, as a matter of fact, when they came to arrest Jesus, you know the story? So where is he? Where, where's your leader? He said, and Jesus said, I am. And they came to arrest him. What happened when Jesus said the, the soldiers were there? Everybody was there. Here's Jesus right there in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is in the Mount of Olives, by the way. He said, I am. He, I am. But the minute he said, I am, everybody fell. Who can stand before the great I am? Who can stand before the great I am? Do you know how you can stand before the great I am? 
when you surrender like that song said, I surrender myself to you. Lord, I empty myself. I empty myself, Lord. I empty myself. Here I am. And began, begins to restore. Restore you. Restore me. To what? What are you restoring me to, to Lord? The image that Adam had. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Do you know what God must have told Adam? You know the secrets that God must have shared with Adam and Eve, both of them? There was a relationship there. You know, and, and this is so important and because in, in, in all of this, we, 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 we see God's original purpose. Why he put Adam? He wanted fellowship with Adam and Eve. Why did, why did God go in the garden looking for Adam and Eve? He was looking for fellowship. He was looking for fellowship. He wanted, he want, and, 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 and man was made different than the angels. Not that he couldn't, but he wanted some, something intimate. Uh, so he wanted fellowship. And then um, he also put in us the character of God. The character of God. What does that mean? God is a father. And God reproduces. And God put the ability in Adam and Eve to reproduce. So, hear me. You can write these down. Number one, fellowship with God. Fellowship with God. You know, here we say in that verse, fellowship with God. Number two, um, the character of God. As you surrender your life to Jesus. Now come to church. Church doesn't save you. Hear me. Church doesn't save you. There's a lot of people in church that are going to hell. Oh, you don't want to hear me here say that, right? <laughs> it's true. It's coming to a place of surrendering to God and realizing that without Jesus, I'm lost. I need to repent. I need to repent. Not my will, but your will be done. So, you know, uh, again, as you do that, um, you, you begin to have that fellowship. I have it here. The character of God. We, as we worship God, hear me, three things. As we worship God and we surrender our lives to him, we start drawing closer to God. We start drawing closer to God. How many of you got little kids and you love your kids, right? You're big kids. You love them. You love your kids. You pray for them. You know, no matter how big they are, you just love them. You cannot see what other people see. To you, they look perfect. You know, they're all great. They're all wonderful. You know, because you love your kids. Well, reproduction, the same thing. You know, we are called to reproduce. How do we do that? By sharing the gospel. By telling people about the wonderful sacrifice that, that, that God gave. He gave his son. So we begin to reproduce. We, this church here, we are reproducing. Hear me, we are reproducing. We, we have the, we, the people come that give their hearts to Jesus. We got the class of discipleship. We got the class of, uh, um, of apologetics. We have praise. We got worship. We got prayer. A a amen. We come together. We have fellowship. We go downstairs. There's food downstairs. Oh, we go and pa we participate. Sometimes there's cake. Sometimes we have meals here, right? We're going to have the picnic where there, there's fellowship. We're growing. And, and just like God had it in the, in the garden, we're fellowshipping with God when we come before him in prayer, when we lift up our hands and we cry out to him. And the wonderful thing with, with God today is that we pray. And you're ready for this? God speaks back to us. God speaks to us. Through the Holy Spirit and through, all through his word. Or still voice that just God speaks. You recognize the voice of God. The sheep knows his voice and they follow it. We know the voice of God. So God is bringing restoration and, and healing. Um, I, I, and um, so we, we are becoming more and more like him. When God saves us from sin through the blood of Jesus, he remakes us in the image of God. You hear that? When God saves us from sin... Through the blood of Jesus, he remakes us in the image of, uh, of God. That is the second and last Adam. The church is remade into the image of Christ because we are his body, right? We are his body. We are his bride. The Bible says he's coming again for a spotless bride, a, sp a bride without spot or wrinkle. Um, Christ himself is the image of God. There's a few scriptures for that. Uh, but we must not forget. Uh, that there are other words that describe us in this image of God. I put down servant of God. We are the servant of the most high God. 
We are the servant of the most high God. We begin to serve. If Jesus served us when he was on earth, right? He washed the disciples' feet. He, 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 he was with the people. Uh, we are servant of the most high God. And now we can turn to John 15, 15. John 15, 15. There's something interesting here. John 15, 15. It says this. I'll, I'll begin with 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that you then to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you to do, no longer do I call you servants. So this is weird. I so said, wait a minute, I'm a servant of God. You are a servant of God, but in serving, we serve one another. But God doesn't just leave us there. Now God said, you are my friend. What do you think God had in Adam and Eve? He had a friend. I love that. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. It so, uh, said, you are my friend. You are uh, if, uh, I'm sorry, you are my friend. If you do, if you do whatever I command, there's a, there's a condition. You got to be obedient. No longer do I call you servant, for a servant does not know what, what his master is doing. But I call you friend. Wow. I call you friend. So you are the friend of God. You are the servant of the Most High. You are the friend of God. Amen. Uh, three, um, you're the bride. We, we are the sons of God. We are being adopted. We're the sons of God, and we are the bride of Christ. Our likeness, spiritual, uh, our likeness is a spirit, soul, and body. A, a, um, or, or what's that? Or, or being just like the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So man is triune, just like the Father, just like God. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are body, soul, and spirit. Try you just like God. Um, reproduction again. Um, uh, God is uh, God is a father, and we need to be like Him. He wants His children to be like Him. So, I just wanted to concentrate on this. I want to next week talk about the church and the kingdom. What's the difference between the church and the kingdom of God? There is a difference. Uh, and eventually, I'm going to go talk all, all different aspects of the church. But we are made in His image. We are made in His image. We are the church. Who are we? We are made in his image. We're going to love like he loves. We're going to feel like he feels. We are going to have a relationship with God. Amen? You're going to be able to come. And the, like my wife reminded me this morning, and Giselle, I was talking to her this morning, from glory to glory to glory, he's changing us. Amen? So we're moving in that direction. We're moving, and we are being changed. Our young people are being changed. Our children are being changed. Let me tell you, this culture is changing. This earth is changing, but not for the best. We have a, relig a, a, um, a rebellious society. Totally rebellious. No one wants to be under authority. No one wants to, to do what is right in their own eyes. That, that isn't what that God said in, in the book of Judges. Everybody did what was right in their own eyes. You know, so... We, as a body of Christ, we are to be like him. I mean, let's all stand this morning. God, make us like you. Make us like you, Lord. Amen. Make us like you. Be in your image, Lord, your image. Um, <clears throat> praise God. I know... This is probably not the most exciting, but there's a lot of truth that I said today. And we need to hold on to this truth, you know, on who we are as a church. That is so, so important. The church since the foundation of the world, all right? Those are called out ones. Uh, God had different instruments, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, he changed at that time. But it's still the same purpose, to have a people, to have a people. After his heart, that loves him, a relationship. That's you and I. 
That's you and I. Amen? Whether Jew or Gentile, it doesn't matter. God, and upon the nation of Israel, he's going to, by the way, keep them in prayer. They were attacked, I think, by Iran. Um, it's protecting them, uh, praying for them. Uh, but that time will come when the time of the Gentiles is over. That's not to say that God's not saving Jewish people. There's actually a revival going on in Israel. People don't know about that. God is saving a lot, a lot of Jewish people. God is moving. But at the same time, the enemy won't let go. So you got the Gentiles. It's our period. It's our time. There's a time for the Jews who will come when the two witnesses here. It's only going to be a few years, but let me tell you, they're going to come in masses. So it is awesome what God is doing on the earth. I need to tell you, when you watch the news, don't fear. Don't get scared. God is what? In control. He's in control of the situation. Amen? We may in what? The image of God. Praise God. In, in, in the natural and spiritually now being restored. Guys, let's worship. in your head, the same old guilt and regret you've heard a thousand times before. After the choices you made, you're waiting for me to say, I couldn't love you anymore. The enemy has lied to you, but listen to me, here's the truth. I couldn't love you anymore than I do right Downstairs, where we could sing it to him too. <laughs> Go. Uh, 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Maddie. Happy birthday. God bless you. You're dismissed. Go downstairs. We have a lot of food to give out. Amen. And there's some coffee. Go grab some coffee and follow.